Hare Krishna. So the question is how to deal with lust, not lusty desires. First of all, let us understand what we mean by lust and we let us know what is the origin of this lust. And then part three would be how to deal with it. So first question, what is lust? Atmendra Priti Vancha Tari Boli Kaam, Krishnendra Priti Vancha Dhari Prem Naam. In the Chaitanya Charitamrit, Srila Krishnadas Kaviraj Goswami describes that the desire to please our senses is karma or lust, while the desire to selflessly please the senses of Sri Krishna is prema or pure love. Now in this world, we fail to distinguish uh, the difference between love and lust. Most of the times, what we see is lust, but it is very nicely covered like a birthday present, decorated saying it is love. We find with passing time, relationships break. You have love couples breaking off. You have mother and son breaking off. So relations in this world are breaking completely. So the desire, everyone who gets into a relationship or deals in this material world has some tinge of selfishness. We don't do anything selflessly or unconditionally. We always do something only when we have some ulterior motive or some, um, some, something that we could gain out of it. Even when we start our academic studies, we have a desire that I want to study so that I get a job. Now somebody tells you that you're not going to get a job, will you still study? Very difficult, very difficult. So everything is backed up by the result of that activity. You enter a school only so that you get out of that school someday, so that you get a nice job. You get into a job, you work like a donkey. Why? Because you like to work? No, because the pay that comes up is soothing. So every single step or every decision in our life is made with this desire of getting something in return for our senses. This is described as lust. However, in the, in the colloquial usage, lust boils down to sexual attachment. So what is this origin of this lust? It is described that we are all part and parcel of Krishna in the spiritual world and we are in a very nice uh, love-filled relationship with Sri Krishna. Now when we leave his as association and we come into this material plane or this material contamination, we find that everything gets reflected in a perverted fashion. So the attachment that we have towards Krishna in a selfless manner, which is love, gets reflected and in a perverted fashion in this material world as lust. Therefore, it is very, very difficult to overcome lust because it is very, very difficult for us to eternally stop loving Krishna. So this lust takes different roots. When it is satisfied, it takes the root of greed. When I want something for myself and I get it, then it takes the path of greed, where I want more. Now, if I want something and that's not satisfied, it takes the path of anger. So therefore, Krishna explains in the Bhagavad Gita, all these three emotions must be given up. However, the root is from lust. Kamesha Krodesha Rajoguna Samudbhava. He says it is only lust, Arjuna, which propels us to sin. Trividam narakasyedam dwaram nashanam atmanah Kama Kroda Tata Lova Tasmade Tatrayam Tajit. Krishna explains that there are three gates to hell anger, lust, and greed. Therefore, a sane man should give it up. And as we discussed, it starts from lust. Now, how do we control this lust? Is it possible to control lust? Or is it completely, are we just to succumb to this desire? Krishna again explains in the Bhagavad Gita, Daivi Hesha Gunamai Mama Maya Duratyaya Mameva Ye Prapadhyante Maya Metam Tarantit. Krishna explains that this desire to satisfy the self, also called as lust, is very, very difficult to overcome. Duratyaya, very difficult, almost impossible. And the only way we can overcome is we take complete shelter at the lotus feet of Sri Krishna. Samashritaye padapallava plavam mahat padam punya yasho murare bhavam budir vatsa padam param padam 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 yat vipadam natesham. The Bhagavatam also describes that lust or material suffering in this world, which is like an ocean and we are drowning every day, becomes as insignificant 
as water held in the hoof print of a calf. So we can very easily overcome, provided we take shelter of Krishna. Now, this is the philosophical aspect. Some practical steps how to control lust. First and foremost, if one aspires to be a brahmachari or a celibate monk throughout his life and is finding difficulty in overcoming this sexual desire, then it is a very, uh, it, is, it is a good idea or a good decision to step down to Grihast Ashram, where a person now gets into this ashram, gets married to a, 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 a good wife and uses his lusty tendency or his propensity in a positive way to give birth to Krishna conscious children in this world. It is not wrong to have sex, but it is wrong to have it in an illicit uh, or illegitimate manner. Krishna says in the Bhagavad Gita that he is that lust which doesn't break religious principles. Buddhir buddhir matam asmi tejas tejas vinamaham balam balavatam chaham kama raga vivarjitam dharma viruddha bhuteshu kamosmi varatarashava. Krishna says, I am that lust which follows or which is on, on the basis of proper scriptural rules and regulations. So when one gets married and according to the instruction of Guru and the blessings of the Vaishnavas becomes a parent and trains the child to become a good devotee of the Lord, that is proper utilization of lust. But however, if one aims to be a Brahmachari and is having some uh, lusty fluctuations, then we must understand we must uh, push ourselves more in the service of the Lord. If we are 50% in Krishna consciousness, then we are 50% in Maya. We have to push ourselves 100% in Krishna consciousness by being in the association of elevated Brahmacharis so that our lusty tendencies are properly subdued and properly channelized in the right perspective. Hare Krishna.